opening sprint. And taken by the Colby Mules going right to left. There were five meter and two meter markers in the sideline, the five meters closer to mid pool, the two meters closer to the end lines in the goal. So Colby and White going right to left. No goal. If it was a goal, we're sorry. I heard no goal. That was after the whistle. Bowden going left to right, and then is denied by the Colby keeper. Sorry, we do not have our rosters available for this game. As we are a minute into the game, the score is believed to be scoreless. And that is good. Goal for Cat. 19 and white. It is now Kobe and white. 19, Bowden and dark. Nothing yet. A minute into the contest. This is the third place game, our final game in North Atlantic action. Goal is believed to be good. Bowden trying to handle it. It will be an ordinary foul on Kobe. Polar Bears with it, going left to right, looking to tie it up. And the Polar Bears do just that. Goal for cap seven in dark, and it's now Bowden in dark one, Colby in white one, minute and 20 or so into this contest. This game has started quite late, due to when our first place game between Top seeded Bates and fourth seeded Vermont finished with 14 to 10 Bobcats over the Vermont Catamounts. Colby is the two seed. It's possession for the Mules. I believe it is six on six. And right to left in the Bowden end. And that was handed right to Bowden by the Mules. About two minutes in, it's Bowden one, Colby one. Last game of the season for both clubs. And there's a foul on the Polar Bears. Possession Colby College of Waterville, Maine, here in Brunswick, Maine. Now at the top, inside the Bowden end, ordinary foul by the Polar Bears. And what pass? Ordinary foul on Bowden. And that will find the left corner. Goal for cap 17 in white for Colby. And we believe the score is now Colby College in white to Bowden in dark. One. About two and a half, three minutes in. We are sorry for any scoring inaccuracies at any time if goals have counted that we said didn't. It is possible that we have missed a goal. Now that's a wet shot stopped in front of the keeper. Possession for Colby College. Long outlet already to the boat in five. And the polar bear keeper has it. Now we're buying, it's going to be an exclusion on Bowden, so six out of five power play for the Mules. He shoots, but it's off the post. It looked like an opening was right there. Just couldn't find it. Colby 0-1 on the power play. Bowden looking to counter here. Now for the whole set. We'll poke it to the right side and through. Bowden's cap seven and White takes advantage of the missed power play by Colby. And it's now the Polar Bears in dark to Colby College and White to Bowden the three seed. Colby the two seed about four minutes or so into the contest. For third place. And this is the last game of the season in this division. 
We have two other divisions on the CWPA network also contesting Championship Sunday. Now you can see after this game, the New York division and New England division. Bowden took it away, and now it's possession Bowden. That's a long time for the referees to signal who it belongs to. Clearly taken by Bowden. Bowden would like to grab the advantage. Bowden from up top. Picked off by the Mules. And he's saying that it's possession. Bowden now inside the two. And through. Go for Cat Nine and Dark for the Polar Bears. And it's now Bowden and Dark three. Colby and White two. About two minutes or so to go in the opening period. There's a timeout in the pool. Three to two, we believe Bowden over Colby. Hi, I'm Wolf Wigo. Do you want to improve your game? Everyone should have a cap seven ball to improve their ball handling skills. If you really want to improve your game, you've got to have a couple water polo balls in your house. Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm kicking around the ball, spinning it in my fingers, playing with it, kicking it. It's a lot of fun. Get one and take your ball handling skills to a new level. Two Bowden Polar Bears over the Colby Mules. We're going to the latter part of the first quarter. Bowden College leading three to two. Cap Sevens Brad Schumacher will be holding a clinic Saturday, November 17th, 9 to 11 a.m. at Fordham University. That is for the MAWPC Championship. It's for, this clinic is for athletes 10 to 18. It's $65 per athlete. Registration before October 29th. After that date, $75. Should be a fun day, an all-star game. A lot of water polo and a lot of fun. You could also a lot of good stuff by going as well. And the timeout. Possession here for Colby College going right to left in white. Dunk it for the hole. Picked up. Backhand. Beautifully executed. Cat Free can smile all he wants with a shot like that. He couldn't believe it. And it's now Colby and White Free. Bowden and Dark Free. About a minute or so to go in our opening period. And Bowden going left to right. It looks like it is tipped and stolen away here by the Mules. Colby looking to go ahead. And that's going to be an exclusion on Bowden, so Colby, at second power play, chance, and this time, it's good. Cap 17 with at least his second, I believe, if the score is right. And it's now Colby in white, four, Bowden in dark. Free. It's a 2 0 mule run here in Brunswick, Maine. We are over 30 seconds to go in the first quarter of the third place game, which started quite late. So it was supposed to tip off at 11.30 a.m. It was at least 20 minutes after that on the East Coast. We zoom in to the Colby end. 10 seconds in the shot clock for Bowden. Bowden will fire the left side, it skips out of play. The Bowden then is now the strong end. In the regular season, Bowden got a 5 0 forfeit over in the Mules. Colby College at a Colby tournament won 15 to 13 against the Polar Bears on September 30th. These two teams met yesterday as well. And that's the back of the net. Bowden ties it up. Net four and a goal by Cap Seven in dark. I believe that's his third. 
And the game is now Bowden in dark for Colby in white for Bowden's the three seed, Colby the two. Top seeded Bates defeated fourth seeded Vermont 14 to 10 in the championship game. Now we'll back it up. A long shot is over to Cage. It will be a goal throw for the Polar Bears. And Bowden. Now it's in the ball. And wet pass. And now dry the wet pass. In the Colby 5. A little outside. In the shot clock, now for the hole. There's a foul on Bowden. Possession here for Colby. Some point we should be approaching the end of this quarter. It's fired out of play. Will throw for the Polar Bears. Now in transition. Bowden looking for numbers. Possibly on the perimeter. And a skip pass in the back. It's tap six for Bowden. Nearly picked off. 12 on the shot clock. And that's a foul on Bowden. And that will be the final possession here in the first quarter. Kobe will look to take it. And that will do it. After one quarter, Bowden in dark four, Colby in white four. This is the third place game in the North Atlantic Division. Hi, I'm Brad Schumacher, co-founder of Cap7 International. Today we're going to talk about the Cap7 rebounder and the different variations you can use to really put this tool to work. Okay, The most important thing you can use a rebounder for is lots of repetitions. Let's take a look at what Wolf's doing over here and I'll talk through some of the different things. He's got the one kilogram ball. He's going off one rebounder. We've got it set up in a corner so he can work on his cross pass passes and body position. Now if he grabs a second ball, second one kilogram ball, he can work on using both at the same time. You're getting lots of different skills here and lots of different repetitions. Cross your body, everything focused. You're getting a ton of repetitions in a short amount of time. If you really want to be challenged, you would add a weight belt. Okay, there's a lot of different variations you can do. Check them out, cat7.com. Looking to take your game to the next level? Find more drills, skills, and tips on Cap7's website. The CWPA Network has more streams in store for the 2018 men's club season. Keep checking collegiatewaterpolo.org and visit our tentative schedule for the current season under the multimedia section and remote streaming tab. All regular season remote broadcasts are now free of charge, courtesy of Cap7 and the CWPA. We have a good one so far here in Brunswick, Maine at Bowdoin College after one quarter in the third place game. It's third seeded Bowdoin, Polar Bears four in dark. And Colby College, a second seed, Mules in white four. This is the final game of the season in the North Atlantic Division. After this game, it'll be it for us here. I plan on then going to the New England Division to call four games at Boston U's New England Division Championship Tournament. Bowden and Dark going left to right. Colby in white, right to left. And for those who would want to see the New England Division as well, they were hoping this one ends in regulation. It's a good one so far. Colby gets the sprint. Going right to left. That's going to be an exclusion on Bowden. The 
player up now for Colby, which I believe has made one of two on the power play. Now we'll fake it with the egg beater. And we're playing perimeter pass, and that is a field block momentarily. Now we'll pass. It is even strength. Still under 10 shot clock. Shot fired off the post. Gobbled up by Bowden. So about 30 seconds in, the second quarter, it's 4-4. Four to four. Bowden with the ball. It's going to be an exclusion on Colby from the other end. So, I believe, first power play opportunity for the Polar Bears of Brunswick, Maine. Ball is thrown out here in the third place game. Courtesy WPA Network Remote Broadcast, courtesy of Cap 7. Built for water polo, made for water polo. Been a crazy weekend in the CWPA club and varsity. Crazy weekend for college football. Three NCAA Division I unbeatens have fallen from the ring of unbeatens. I believe NC State, Cincinnati, and Ohio State have been knocked out. Now have one loss each. A Bowden on the power play. 22nd advantage. And the hole pounces in and it's deflected by the keeper. Goal for cap 12 in dark on the man advantage. And Bowden is on top. 5-4 to four in dark over to Colby Mules. And a minute or so into the second quarter. We have four seven-minute regulation quarters. We'll be looking to get back in it. Four in the first, none in the second for the Mules. Four in the first, one in the second for Bowden. And beat down there for Bowden's keeper. So we do not have the rosters handy for this one. When they fell on Colby College. Since this pool has a deep and shallow end, if your feet touch the shallow end, I believe it's a turnover. You see, the swimmers are really working hard here. Oh, what a good sweep! And Bowden takes advantage. Cat four, with just a little soft touch. And uh, I believe Bowden did get it. And we'll see when the half is done whether or not it counted. So the score is believed to be six to four. It might not be. But Bowden is definitely doing well. So we're sorry for any scoring inaccuracies. We hope to get it fixed once the half is complete. Turnover. About two minutes into this quarter or so, we believe it's Bowden and Dark six, Colby and White four. It might be five to four, depending on that last one counted. And inside the Bowden five. Lost it. Now the egg beater will go inside. Fire secured now by the keeper of Bowden College. Bowden going left to right. This is club water polo. So we have seven minute quarters. That's a foul against Bowden. Colby now has the possession going right to left and white. Looking to get back in it. That's an exclusion on the polar bears. So player up for Colby. Which has missed a couple of opportunities on the man up. And the power play for 20 seconds for the Mules. And the white caps down, we believe, by two. Lost the lob. Backhand is spectacular! Man, he's been really nailing it down, Cap Free, on the backhands. And it's now, we believe, Bowden and Dark. Six, Colby College and White, five. About two and a half, three minutes into the second quarter. And 
Uh, Midpool, Bowden, we believe, up by one. In halftime, we'll know what the actual score is. Now going inside. That was held for a bit too long. Ten in the shot clock. Ordinary foul on Colby College. That was broken up. Seven in the shot clock. Someone's cap came off for Bowden. I'm not sure if your cap comes off, you can instantaneously put it back on. But no foul there. Poke to the right side, and we believe the score is tied. Cap 17. In white, with at least his third, if our eyes are correct. Four in the first, two in the second for Bowden. Four in the first, two in the second for Colby, if our eyes are seeing things correctly. With three and a half minutes or so into the quarter. Russian Bowden. Polar Bears looking to get back on track. Might take it from here. Wide left. Skips out of play, almost out of the whole pool entirely. On the bounce. Three minutes or so to go in the first half. Colby going right to left. In white. Well, Colby wanted to be in the first place game this year. But possibly has to settle for third. Not a difficult save there for the Bowden keeper. We have crowned a few champions already this season. Next weekend, we plan on crowning a few more, including Division Three national champion. Could be Washington St. Louis, could be someone else. That's going to be an exclusion on Colby. Could be a costly mistake. So six on five power play for the Polar Bears. There's the feed. Can't get the finish. Bowden misses this opportunity. After one quarter it was four to four, we think it was six to six unless otherwise stated something else. Shot clock at ten. Colby not taking a shot quite yet. Ordinary foul. Gotta take a shot. I'm not sure if it knows how much time's left. We'll dunk it to the corner. Would have been a shot clock violation. Bowden with the ball. Polar Bears now moving to the hole. Lost the opportunity. Held it on for too long. And I believe the advantage rule was called as another team would have been in disadvantage. In the first place game, Bates defeated Vermont 14 to 10. Bates had over 11 power play opportunities. So they have about a dozen opportunities capitalized on at least half. And the well, power play is how you can win in games. And that was a shot clock violation, and that will do it for the first half. The Bowden what we thought was not good and it turns out it is actually Colby leading 6-5 to five. so one of the goals did not count that's why we waited until the half concluded after one half it's Colby in, do in white 6 Bowden in dark 5 as we enter the second half <laughs> Yeah. 
seventh tip of the week. Hi, I'm Wolf Wygo, and today we're going to talk about what we're doing with our legs as we finish our shot, okay, transitioning from an egg beater to a strong breaststroke kick. So when you're shooting the ball, you want to get as much power as you can, and we're trying to use our whole body. So we're not just using our arm, we're using our abs, our back, okay, and even our legs to finish it off. So if you think about an egg beater kick, you're doing one, one leg alternated with the other, okay, and if I want to get maximum power, I'm going to do a strong breaststroke kick with both legs at the same time, thrusting forward to get as much velocity on that ball as I can. So as I'm faking the ball, I'm in a regular egg beater position, I'm egg beatering hard, okay, and as I'm about to shoot the ball, I'm going to accelerate, draw both legs up, and do a breaststroke kick as I come forward and bring that ball. So I'm going to do a breaststroke kick, I'm transitioning from that egg beater, coming up, recoiling my body, getting my legs into that frog position, where I try and get them up for as much power as possible. If I keep my legs low, I'm only kicking with a little bit of energy, pushing a little bit of water. If I can draw my knees higher, also if you're more flexible, it's really helpful. Okay, so anytime you're working on egg beater, okay, it's really good to make sure that you're stretching, okay, when you're out of the pool, trying to get as much flexibility as possible. The more you can torque your leg up, the more water you're gonna be able to push. Okay, so again, I'm egg beatering, transitioning, and finishing with a strong egg beater as I come forward. Let's check it out one more time. So we talked about our legs. The last thing we're doing is with that offhand, we're gonna be also pulling water behind us so that it pulls us forward. So as I'm doing that breaststroke kick, I'm pulling with my left hand, trying to grab as much water as possible, while at the same time following through on my finish. Okay, so a lot of players will use that offhand to really maintain their, their vertical position in the water, but once they shoot, they just let it sit there. Okay, so you wanna remember that you're gonna use that offhand to help get out of the water, and then once you're coming forward, you're gonna use it to pull forward as well. So you're using it every, every way you wanna make your position better or your shot better. You're activating every part of your body really, but finishing with that left hand or right hand if you're a lefty. The Collegiate Water Polo Association selects all conference teams in each of its men's and women's club and varsity divisions. Teams are selected by the coaches in each respective division based on nominations from teams. Representatives from each team rank their own players in order of ability and send their names to the CWPA office by the deadline sent out by the league to the teams. The CWPA office compiles the rankings by division and releases the information to every team to serve as a guide when voting. Teams vote for the top 12 field players, two goalies, an MVP, and coach of the year using the ballot made available on the website. So it's actually six to five, I believe, Colby. We're sorry for any scoring inaccuracies as we enter our second half of play. In the second half, Bowden and Dark going right to left. And Colby and White left to right. The winner of this game will be the third place finisher. The loser will finish in fourth out of five teams in North Atlantic. North Atlantic last place finisher is St. Michael's of Colchester, Vermont. St. Michael's College, I believe, forfeited its games. And after this game, I plan on going over to New England Division action for game eight, third place, first place, and 11 of the New England Championship Tournament at Boston University. First game there is supposed to be at 1.15 p.m. Eastern, the circumstances permit. So Bowden, right to left and dark. Colby, left to right and white. We can thank Cap7 again for sponsoring us this season so we can bring these games to you live for free.
And congratulations to Bates College for defeating Vermont in the first place game, 14 to 10. It was Vermont's first ever appearance in the title game. Bates now has six division crowns. The sprint is made, and it appears Colby will get it going left to right to begin the second half. The score believed to be six to five. One of the Bolden goals to not count. Ordinary foul against the Polar Bears. I think the shot clock had malfunctioned. This is not the first time today the shot clock had an error. It should be Bowden Ball then, should it? This is interesting. I think the shot clock had a malfunction. It will reset for Bowden. So about 30 seconds into the third quarter. Bowden looking to tie it up according to our eyes. Shot clock counting down. Will be fired and Colby averts damage. Minute into the quarter. Colby looking to extend it here. And that hits the back of the nylon. Beautifully executed for Cat 23 and White for the Mules. And it's now Colby College and White 7. Bowden and Dart, five. Colby College is the two seed. Bowden is the three. In this five club tournament, it had been won by Bates College over the University of Vermont. Bowden wants third place. Doesn't want to be in fourth. The cool ending to the season. Everyone was surprised that Vermont defeated Bowden yesterday in the de facto semifinal. It's October 21st, 2018. Cold Sunday in the Eastern Region. Hope everyone is safe and warm. About a minute and a half or so into this third quarter. Colby having trouble advancing here under 10 in the shot clock to the hole. It'll be short, wet, in possession for Bowden. About two minutes or so into the quarter. There's the outlet made. Push against Bowden. Possession now for Colby College. Moose goals, Colby has scored this season, in the regular season that is, was 15, twice. A 15-4 win against St. Michael's and a 15-13 win on September 30th against Bowdoin. Now here's an opportunity, one and one, for Bowdoin, which drops it off. Oh, that, you went over the bat. This is not gymnastics. Although that would be cool, though. Good transition, but the feed can't be held on. Possession here. Bowden, we have a timeout. Ball will be thrown out. We have a timeout. In the pool, it will be a full timeout. Now, three minutes or so into the second half, it's Colby College and White 7. And it's the post Bowden Polar Bears leading down. Two, seven to five is the score in favor of Colby.
At the CWPA, we are always thinking about new ways to make your water polo experience more fun. That's why we've come up with a new program where we're going to be streaming all regular season games for free this season. Now, this program is made possible by the generosity of CAP7. CAP7 is one of those great organizations that feel strongly about the growth of water polo and the experience for you as an athlete. So we hope you enjoy these broadcasts. Just remember, they're coming to you courtesy of this great sponsor. To watch live broadcasts on the CWPA network, visit W. We hope you have enjoyed the CWPA network regular season broadcasts. We are out of the timeout. Bowden down by a couple. Now halfway through this third quarter. The lob and the finish. Cap seven. That is a good goal for the team in dark. It is now Colby in white. Seven. Bowden in dark. Six. A few minutes to go in our third quarter of the third place game. Remember after this game. That'll be it for the North Atlantic Division, but we have New York and New England Division Championships this afternoon on the CWPA Network, CWPATV.com. I plan on going to the New England Division to call the action. Four games starting at 1.15 p.m. Eastern. Circumstances permitting, of course. Now, Bowden will try to tie it up. Colby has its largest lead, and its largest lead at two. Each team with a goal apiece in this quarter. It was six to five at halftime in favor of the Mules. Bowden and Colby were tied up at four after one. Colby and White going right to left, going left to right. Bowden and Dark right to left. And going inside, backing up. I think that would have been a ball under anyway. Good pressure for Colby. Shot clock violation. And look at the outlet there. Colby looking to take matters into their own hands. And the Mills capitalize on the outlet. At 15 with the beautiful transition outlet goal. It's now Colby in white. Eight, Bowden in dark. Six with about three minutes or so to go in the third quarter. Four in the first, two in the second, two in the third for the Mules, and for Bowden, four, one, and one. Back to a two-goal edge for Colby, which is a short bench. Ordinary foul on the Mules. No, Colby is frustrated about where it is in this tournament. They have to play by the whistle. Colby here looking to get out in front by a further margin. 19 on the shot clock. A skip shot from beyond the five is out of play. It'll be a goal throw for the Polar Bears. About two and a half minutes or so to go in the corner. Bowden down two. Thompson off to the perimeter inside the Colby 5 meter area. Close to the corner of the Colby 2. Nice and outside the 5. Back to the corner of the 5. Shot clock is winding down, so Bowden needs to get something off. Shot clock would have expired. It's a 2 meter corner. It was a deflection out of play by the keeper. Good stop, though. So fresh shot clock and about 2 minutes to go here in the quarter. Only been a full timeout used in this third period. Bowden needs to set up. Backhand! Beautiful finish! Goal for Cat 9 in dark. And Bowden pulls within one. Colby Mills in white 8. Bowden Polar Bears in dark 7. Colby the 2 seed. Bowden the 3 seed. St. Michael's has finished in 5th. Vermont second, Bates 22 straight division wins, the champion for the second straight year, the Bates Bobcats. Now inside, Colby 5 now at top, actually the Bowden 5, pardon, 
Colby take trying to take it with the fake. Now the mid pull. Nine on the shot clock. Colby with the lob. Oh, that almost went to the left corner. On the goal. Bowden looking to tie it up. Ordinary foul. And we'll set up. Right into the arm of the Colby keeper. Found a minute and a half or so to go in the period. Colby in white, eight. Bowden in dark, seven. According to our calculations. Colby would like to extend the lead. Games against Bowden this season have been quite close for Colby. Colby would like to put it away. Do not have to get a nail biter. Field block there for Bowden that will reset the clock. Maybe a minute or so in this quarter. To the right side. Bowden has tied it up. My cat nine. Eight to eight. Three to two scoring run for Bowden. With seconds to go in the period. According to our eyes. Three seconds left. Got to get something up and not going to be able to. Ladies and gentlemen, after 21 minutes, it's the host Bowden Polar Bears in dark eight and the Colby College Mules in white eight. This will set up for a final, interesting final seven minutes of regulation. Don't go away. Custom ball options. You'll see in my right hand here is a laser etched ball and you can see that we have uh, 5 meter.com is the one the company that had these balls made um, the two differences really with with you know a custom printed ball is this ball is painted on and the 5 meter ball this is laser etched into the ball this is exactly how it looks and then we have our custom balls for schools clubs high schools whatever you name it everyone lots of people do it and this is actually screened on the ball um, but you have to do 60 balls on this side, 12 balls on the laser edge. You're watching the CWPA broadcast brought to you by CAP7. Hi, I'm Wolf Weiger with CAP7. There's one more quarter to go in this game. Fourth quarter coming up now. Interested club teams or fans of certain club teams who would like to see their institutions stream games when they host tournaments should, ever, should reach out to the CWPA Director of Multimedia, John Weaver, at video at collegiatewaterpolo.org. Well, what a game this has been. A tight one throughout. Everyone here hoping there was a winner in regulation. Going to our fourth and final quarter of regulation if we're tied up after 28 minutes of two three minute overtime periods. And for our sakes, we'd probably like to see it end in regulation because after this game, I had to head over to do the New England Division Tournament on the CWPA Network and I don't necessarily want to overlap. But regardless of what happens, this looks like it's going to be an exciting finish for third place. We're now in the fourth quarter. Final one of regulation. Bowden and Dart. Four in the first, one in the second, three in the third. Colby and White. Four in the first, two in the second, two in the third. Let me get back in the pool. Colby, Bowden, and Dart going right to left. Colby and White. Left to right. This is the final game of the tournament. Next weekend, we also plan on having more tournaments, including the Division Free Collegiate Club Championship in Middletown, Connecticut. We also plan on having some 
Division Championship Tournament in the CWP Network next week as well, including Sierra Pacific, Rocky Mountain, Southeast. And it's Colby going left to right. They want to take it quickly. So the Mills with the ball. Game tied up. It's tied up after this quarter. We'll go to two three minute overtimes. In the hole. It's going to be an exclusion on Bowden. Player up. That's going to be out of play. Missed the chance there. We're in the Mills. About 30 seconds into this final regulation period. Colby and White, eight. Bowden in dark eight. Polar Bears going right to left in dark. Trying to pounce it. And Colby with it. Foul against the Polar Bears. Shot clock resets. Close to a minute into this final period. Still eight to eight. We're sorry for any scoring inaccuracies. There were goals that were called no goals earlier. Now for the hole. Trying to get a hand on it. Cannot. It is gobbled up by the Bowden keeper. Close to a minute and a half into this final period. Bowden going right to left. Remember these teams bummed out. They couldn't play for the championship. What a deflection. Colby is there to pick it up. And the keeper for the Mules. Colby of Waterville, Maine. Bowden, the host of Brunswick, Maine. So the third place game in the North Atlantic Division Championship Tournament. To the right side and through! Or is it? No goal. And we're sorry for any scoring inaccuracies. To the right side and that one is good! Bowden on top, 9-8 to eight on the goal from cap 4. It's been a while since Bowden had taken the lead. Score believed to be now Bowden in dark, 9, Colby in white. Eight of about 4.5-5 minutes to go in this one. Substitutions can be made. Now possession, Colby. Last one that went through was disregarded. To the right side, out of play. Possession for Bowden. Close to three minutes into the final period. Nine, eight polar bears in the dark caps. Dark caps are listed on the left on our scoreboard graphics. Bowden to three, seed Colby to two. Denied there for Colby. Touches the rope. Corner for the Polar Bears. And Bates, 2018 North Atlantic Division champion, defeated fourth seed of Vermont in the title game 14 to 10. Bates is now a two time defending champ. Session now for Colby looking to tie it up according to our calculations. I think it is out of play. It looked like it was deflected, but was not, and Bowden will look to extend on its lead. There's the outlet, but right to Colby. Now halfway through our final regulation period. Bowden in dark, nine. Colby in white, eight. Colby going left to right and white. Inside the Bowden, five. At the top. Got to be really careful. Your feet don't touch the ground. Because this is a shallow end. Rule two-meter corner by the officials for Colby. 
The shot clock needs to restart. Maybe about three and a half, three minutes to go in this one. If it ends in regulation. Kobe will now take it from the corner. So Kobe's going to finish lower than its regular season placing. He was second in the regular season. will finish either third or fourth. To the right side. Out of play. Whoops. Not an accurate lob there. In about 30 minutes, we plan on bringing you New England Division Game 8 between, I believe, Tufts and Connecticut. Doesn't count. And another wiped out goal. Possession here for Colby. Timeout, Mules. It is 9-8 Bowden with under three minutes to play. I'm Scott Samuel David Weiss, Will Park, a camera operator, to thank Will for his efforts today and for communicating with us with updates. So 2.58 to go in regulation. Some of us hoping that this will end in regulation. If this doesn't end in regulation, there's a possibility that this could overlap the New England Division Championship Tournament. It starts around 1.15 p.m. Eastern for games 8, 3rd, 1st, and 11. Colby now looking to tie it up. And the Mills get it through! Another goal for Cat, 23 in white, and with about two and a half minutes to go in regulation it's Bowden in dark nine Colby in white nine could be a fantastic finish nine to nine these teams last few years have played a lot of tight ones Colby could not come up with the clean pit Bowden looking to regain the edge Shot clock has to be at around 10. About two minutes to go. Foul on Bowden. Colby with a chance to regain the lead. But it's right to Bowden. And the one on one. Now the Colby enters the strong side with two minutes to go. And a tied game. From long distance! Oh, had an opening, but hit the right post. Hold on, there's an exclusion on Colby, so Bowden has a power play. That will be thrown out. It is a huge opportunity for the Polar Bears to regain momentum. Timeout in the pool. Now two minutes to go. The regulation, third seed of Bowden in dark nine, second seed of Colby in white nine, substitutions can be made. This championship tournament broadcast is brought to you by Cap7 and the CWPA, and I have Scott Samuel David Weiss. And we remote coverage at Bowden College in Brunswick, Maine, October 21st, 2018. So Bowden is going to be on the man advantage, power play. Never been as many power plays in this game as the first place game. There were tons of power plays, over a dozen for Bates in the 14-10 win by the Bobcats over the Vermont Catamounts for top honors in this division. Now Bowden with a chance to take the lead with under two minutes to play in regulation. These players want to end it right here, right now. No thought about it. From long distance! Bowden regains the lead. And the goal from Cap 7, he's got about half of Bowden's goal output. And it's now the Bolden Polar Bears in dark 10. And the Colby Mills in white 9. The goal was good on the power play. 
It's about a minute and a half or so to go in regulation. And it's going to be an exclusion on Bowden. Colby on the six on five power play. Colby will do it quickly and score. The goal from cap 17. Approaching one minute to go. We are knotted up at 10 apiece. And the club's wondering if they have any timeouts left. I'm wondering how many timeouts are left. Well, we have a fantastic finish, ladies and gentlemen. We were going to end in a thriller, in regulation. Or we have to go to overtime, and that is denied by Colby. Colby with the chance to take the lead. Bowden, four in the first, one in the second, three in the third, two in the fourth. Colby, four, two, two, and two. Taken away by Bowden. Shot clock needs to reset. But we do have over 30 seconds left. Bowden looking for a great shot. Colby will take it. Shot clock will reset. And now here is a one on one. The shot is put through to the right side. That's cat 19 in white for Colby. And the Mills sees the lead. We have under a minute, I believe, to go in this one. The official is, one of the officials are pointing to something. Okay, so Bowden has one timeout, Colby has two. Thank you officials for clarifying that. So Bowden has one timeout, Colby has two. So if Bowden needs to, it can use its final timeout. Not a lot of time left in this game. 11 to 10, team in the Whitecaps. We'll shoot it, and it will sneak in. A lot of people are saying, when will this game ever end? Cap 12 ties it up at 11. Three goals apiece in this quarter. Nineteen seconds. Colby needs to get it off. Ten on the shot clock. Might need to take it from long distance. We'll dump it off. Five on the shot clock. And there'll be an exclusion on Bowden. So Colby on the man advantage. Timeout, Colby. Not a lot of time left in this one. Score is believed to be 11 to 11. If this is a tied game, if a goal is scored here, the game could end. Clock is at four seconds. Got to get it off here. One shot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 28 minutes. 28 minutes is not enough. And we are probably going into overtime. And if that's the case, we'll have two three minute periods. We're still tied after debt. Sudden death. 
Joe, we have a very good one in the third place game after 28 minutes. Third seed and host Bowden, 11. Second seed of Colby College and White, 11. We are going to overtime. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. Set me up like lemonade. We both know it's bittersweet. will bite your tongue no one is forever young Watching the CWPA broadcast brought to you by Cap7. Twenty-eight minutes hasn't been enough for the polar bears or the mules. It's Bowdoin College in dark eleven, Colby College in white eleven as we head into two three minute overtimes. Bowdoin, four in the first, one in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth. Colby and White, four, two, two, and three. Colby could not get a goal at the buzzer on the power play. So we're going to have two three minute overtimes, and this will possibly overlap into the New England Division Tournament. So 11-11 is the score. So right now we are heading into overtime. So there is a chance that UConn versus Tufts will be overlapped and we're gonna have to start late. I guess Bowden and Colby Want us to stick around longer for the party. So there should be two three minute overtime periods. It is 11 to 11. Bowden in dark. Colby in white. Teams will switch sides after the first overtime period. If we are tied up after these six overtime minutes, we'll go to sudden death. It will be golden goal. Next goal wins. And I believe this is the first for the division this season. I don't believe there have been an overtime game before this one. So, everyone's getting their money's worth here in Brunswick, Maine. It's just that it's going to overlap the New England Division Tournament between Tufts and UConn. We know we're waiting for the officials to come back. I think we're trying to see if it is the actual score. And also going over the procedures with the scorers. Bowden's pumped, ready to go. 
but this is overtime, one of two. After the first overtime, there will be a second. We'll switch sides. So in our first overtime period, Bowden in dark should be going left to right. Colby in white, right to left. Players will take their positions. We want to be in the game. Again, the officials have been Sean Peavy and Jeff Reardon. This is still the third place game. We are in overtime. 11-11 was the score after 28 minutes in regulation. What a way this day is going to end up in the North Atlantic third place game. Again, this is going to overlap the New England division, most likely. So, we are sorry in advance if there is a delayed start for us on the CWPA network for the New England division. Bowden and Dark going left to right. Colby and White right to left. We'll have two three minute overtime periods. Unless the game remains tied that a sudden death will be required. So on the whistle, Bowden and Dark and Colby and White will be at it for the first three minute overtime. The fans here at Bowden loving it. Fans of water polo should love this too. And then there are those who really want to watch the New England division. But it is what it is. We have free water polo here in Brunswick, Maine. First or two overtime periods, here is the sprint. And the mules have it going right to left. So we are first of two three minute periods in overtime. Shot clock will remain the same. It will be possession. Colby from long distance. Touches the rope. 20 plus seconds into the overtime. It will be a corner for Colby. The game is still 11 to 11. Colby going right to left and right. And white. Now from up top. From long distance. And that is out of play. Now 35, 40 seconds into the quarter. Still tied. And 11 into the overtime period. Bowden going left to right here. There have been no huge leads for Eber. Team and it sneaks through! And part of the scoreboard malfunction, we are already getting set for the next game. It's 12-11. And that will be saved, so 12-11 is the score. for Bowden. So over a minute in overtime, 12-11 Bowden. Sorry for technical difficulties we have here. So 12-11, Bowden. Yeah, whistles. Yeah. 
And it's still 12-11, about a minute or so to go. will be an exclusion there on Bowden. So 12-11. And it will be a five meter for Kobe. It's 12-11. Toward the end of the first overtime, and we have a scoreboard error, a, a score bug malfunction. And it's to the right side, and we're tied up at 12. 12 for Bowden, 12 for Colby. Camp 17 scores on the five meter. So 12 to 12 toward the end of the first overtime period. Sorry for the scoreboard problems. The time running out in overtime one. And that's to the back and through. It is 13 to 12. Bowden on the goal by cap four in the first overtime. Thirteen to twelve is eleven eleven at the regulation. Now that is out of play. Thirty seconds. One goal lead. Toward the end of our first overtime period. And that will do it. There's another overtime to be played. 13 to 12 with one period to go. 13 to 12 after one overtime. The second overtime is coming up. Hey, I'm Brad Schumacher, co-founder of Cap7 International. Today we're gonna to talk about the Cap7 Rebounder and the different variations you can use to really put this tool to work. Okay, the most important thing you can use a rebounder for is lots of repetitions. Let's take a look at what Wool's doing over here and I'll talk through some of the different things. He's got the one kilogram ball. He's going off one rebounder. We've got it set up in a corner so he can work on his cross pass passes and body position. Now if he grabs a second ball, second one kilogram ball, he can work on using both at the same time. Getting lots of different skills here and lots of different repetitions. Cross your body, everything focused. And you're getting a ton of repetitions in a short amount of time. If you really want to be challenged, you would add a weight belt. Okay, there's a lot of different variations you can do. Check them out, cap7.com. Looking to take your game to the next level? Find more drills, skills, and tips on Cap7's website. Bowden and Dark, 13. And it's Colby in white, 12, as we headed to our second of two three-minute overtime periods. We've had some technical difficulties with our scoreboard. 
trying to get that fixed at the moment. And I think we've got it covered. Well, almost. So, Bowden and Dart going right to left. And Colby and White left to right. If the game is tied after this period, we'll go to sudden death. And now we are underway. Colby and White with it left to right. It was a two to one scoring run for Bowden in that first overtime period. It was 11-11 after regulation. And that is out of play. It'll be a goal throw here for Bowden. to the side. So about 30 seconds into our second period of overtime. Bowden in dark up 13 to 12. Colby looking to tie it. I'm sorry for the scoreboard graphic looking weird. Some technical difficulties. And after this game we hope to go to Boston University which is going to probably be in progress when we get there between Tufts and Yukon. And it's possession now for Bowden looking to extend the lead with the pass of what pass a fire bobbed up. And it'll be possession for Colby. About two minutes to go in overtime two. It was 11-11 in regulation. This is the third place game, North Atlantic Division. And from long distance, good save there for the Bowden keeper. Close to halfway through this second overtime period. 13-12. Even the dark caps and someone had called a timeout. Substitutions can be made. Bowden wants to keep this lead and end the season in third place. And congratulations to Bates for winning the North Atlantic Division. Bates next weekend will be the free spot at the Division Free Collegiate Club Championship at Wesleyan University. Halfway through this final overtime period. If the game happens to be tied, it'll be sudden death. Now we are a minute away from the New England tournament resuming play. But we're going to have to wait until this one ends, or we are sorry for those who want to see New England action. But since I'm the one who scheduled to cover that as well, it's going to be delayed. But we have a good one here 13 to 12 Bowden in the second overtime period. Now from the perimeter. Batted down by Colby. Now about a minute almost away in this game. Colby going left to right and white. Now back it up. And pass it ahead. A 
There's Rister, and it's saved for Bowden. Bowden really wants this win. Colby needs the goal to tie it up. Colby is going after it. Not much time left. Bowden wants to hold the ball. Two seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the game is finally, finally over. Is it? Or is there a second left? One second. Everyone back in. It is possible for Colby to score. This most likely will do it. Swimming up. Now here's the shot. And ladies and gentlemen, the game is finally, finally over. Final score in two overtimes. Third seeded Bowden in dark, 13. Second seeded Colby in white, 12. That is the end of the North Atlantic Division season. We thank you for tuning in to the CWPA Network. I'm Scott Sable, David Weiss. Thank you for watching. I keep tuning in to the CWPA Network. Up next, the circumstances permit, I plan on heading to the New England Division Championship Tournament in a bit.